Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on producing random numbers that are normally distributed in SPSS. So on occasion when working with SPSS, it's convenient to have random numbers. And often because of the assumptions used in parametric statistics, it's convenient to have random numbers that follow a normal distribution. SPSS provides us a way to produce these fairly quickly and we use the transform and compute variable to do that. But first I want to show you how I've set up the data in the data view here. I have an ID variable with 100 participants. You see it goes from 1001 to 1100. And I've done that so that when I produce the two random variables that I'm going to produce, that there'll only be 100 in each variable, 100 values in each variable. So let me now go to uh, transform and compute value. And I'm just going to call this first one RV1. So it'd be random variable 1. And now we want the numeric expression that produces the random values that follow the normal distribution. So over in our function group, I want to scroll down to random numbers. And of interest to us would be the RV normal, random value normal. But it's worth noting that you can also produce random values that follow many other popular distributions we would use like Poisson, and binomial, chi-square, exponential, f, and gamma, uh, just to name a few of the ones available here. So a lot of abilities to produce random values following a wide variety of distributions. Of course, we'll go with random value normal. And to move this up here, I'm just going to double click. And you can see that arguments for RV normal are the mean and the standard deviation. Now a popular way of producing random numbers is to use Excel. Excel has the rand between function which accepts the minimum value that you want and the maximum values of two arguments. But you can see with RV normal it's looking for the mean standard deviation. So if I want the random values to follow a normal distribution and I want them to appear as a t-score, which is a standardized score with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. I'll use a mean of 50 for the first argument and a standard deviation of 10 for the second argument. And then I'll click OK. You can see it's executed just the one line of code there and I have a hundred random values in random variable one that should approximate the normal distribution. Now I say should because they are still random. So we do have to test to make sure that they are normal. And I'm gonna produce a second variable as well, just for comparison. And I'm gonna leave everything the same except I'm just gonna change the name to random variable two. You can see the code for that. So now we have two random variables that should approximate the normal distribution. So now let's examine these data and see if they are normally distributed. Now we can do that by going and running a KS test and Shapiro-Wilk. But first I want to show you a few other things we can do first. If we highlight this whole variable, you can see that we can run descriptives just with the press of one button here, the run descriptive statistics. Let's just take a look at that really quickly. Remember, I base this on a t-score, so we're looking for a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. And you can see that we do have a mean very close to 50, and the standard deviation is a little below 9, which is about 8.5. And, and the range and the minimum and maximum are fairly consistent with the normal distribution. If we go back to random variable two, 
Again, run the descriptive statistics. We can see here the mean is a little below 50. Standard deviation is a little above 11. And the range, the minimum and the maximum, again, fairly consistent with what we expect with a T-score. From here, let's go to the chart builder under graphs, so graphs, chart builder. This is what it looks like by default. I'm going to select histogram and drag the simple histogram into the preview area and then use random variable one on the x-axis. But before I hit OK, I'm going to add the normal curve. So you check normal curve, display normal curve, then click apply, then click OK. So we can see our data for random variable one on a histogram with the normal curve displayed. So we can see from this histogram that these data are relatively normally distributed. Of course, there are some deviations. Let's take a look at random variable two. I'm just gonna drag that over and replace random variable one leave everything else the same and click OK. And we can see with these data again some deviations but it, they do appear to be generally normally distributed. So now let's take a look at the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test and the Shapiro Wilk test and the other descriptives that are produced with analyze, descriptive statistics and explore. This is what it looks like by default, I'm going to move the random variable 1 and 2 both over to the dependent list. No change for statistics. For plots, I am going to uncheck stem and leaf, and normally I would check histogram. I'll go ahead and leave that checked off, but we've already run the histogram. But I do want uh, normality plots with tests. And click continue, and then options, we have no changes here. So this is ready to run. Click OK. And before we interpret the KS test and the Shapiro-Wilk, it is important to take a look at skewness and kurtosis. There are many guidelines for the range of acceptable skewness values and kurtosis values for a normal distribution. One popular guideline is that the value for skewness must be between negative 1 and 1. And for kurtosis, it must be between negative 2 and 2. So we'll just use that guideline, and we see that both the kurtosis value, or the skewness value, and the kurtosis value here are well within that range for random variable 1. And they're well within that range for random variable 2 as well. So then moving down to test of normality, we have the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test, also known as the KS test, and the Shapiro Wilk. Again, there's differing opinions about which test of normality to use. I generally use Shapiro Wilk. But what is helpful in this instance is that we do not have statist statistically significant findings for KS test on either of the variables or on Shapiro Wilk. So, since we do not have statistical significance, we would say these distributions are normal. If we had a value here that was less than 0 0.05 for either one of these variables, we would say that variable is not normally distributed. So then moving down, I'm going to skip the histogram, but I want to take a look at the QQ plot. This is another good way to, to see if data are normally distributed. These points you want them to run along this line, uh, on the line or very close to the line. You can see there are some deviations here. But generally, this is normally distributed for random variable 1. And as we move down to random variable 2, we see the same thing. There are some deviations. There's some points that aren't really too close to the line, but many of them are right on the line or close to it. I hope you found this video on producing random numbers that are normally distributed in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.